on this episode of Dudesy. I would be in the tub, like taking a bath. He would come in and just pour beer on my head. <laughs> Let him squeeze my boobies. <laughs> ah! Ah! Holes are spooky. Oh, yeah. Look at you, you're in orange and black. It's like it's Halloween. It's Halloween. I can't hear you because of the song. I can hear you. Okay, Chad, on today of all days, let's have a tremendous show. Let's have a fantastic show. It's Halloween. You look great. Welcome to Dudesy. Welcome all. It's a Dudesyful day. I am Will Sasso. I am Death. <laughs> and this is Dudesy, the first podcast in the history of humanity created by, controlled by, processed by, engineered by an artificial intelligence yep. that uh, Will and I have given access to all of our personal data, and it manufactures this show kind of tailor-made to our sensibilities. Mm -hmm. Isn't it something? It's really yeah. something. Yeah. You know, it does all that stuff, and our pal D, uh, <laughs> you know, spins the wheels of steel. Isn't it something? As, isn't it something? Isn't and it something? Uh, But then... You know, you're going to need a couple of dudes, two dudes shitting around. Yeah. And that's, uh, and that's, you know, and that's us because that's what a podcast is. And in our pod show, we like to, we like to uh, do the pod show. So we're going to have to be here for that. Hey, uh, with us as always is Lulio, il cane di strada italiano. Hey, Luli. Hey, come stai? I'm a... He's, he's says, what do you want? What are you What are you doing for for Halloween? You gonna do anything? No, no, I'm a dog. Please don't put a stupid outfit on me. I don't want to do. And it's like I know that. I know because you're just a little baby boy. You're not gonna dress him up. No, fuck that. I hate it when people he dress can be up so their cute. Dog. Look at how cute outfit. he is. He's going as the cutest little doggy in the world. Maybe just a little bow tie or something. Ooh, oh, that would be nice with a ghost on it or some pumpkins. He, yeah, he has a bow tie. He wears a special bow tie for special times. What do you want to go back in your binky bunker? Yeah, I'm just going to go eat a candy in my binky bunker. Oh, he's so sweet. Oh, he's such a sweet boy. No, he wouldn't want to be in a fucking hat or a bow tie the whole time. Yeah. I really hate it when people dress their dogs up. Screw you. Welcome to the 79th Precious episode of Dudesy. Get ready to toast your ghosts and fool your ghouls because it's Halloween, All Hallows' <laughs> Eve, Devil's Night. That special time once a year when the old gods arise from their slumber to renew their pact with a thousand-faced demon to hold off their march against humanity until the year 2027. Why? Oh my god. <laughs> you boys look so cute in your little costumes. Okay. I absolutely love it. Oh. I hate to admit it, but I think I just got dudesied by oh. your goddamned cuteness. <laughs> look at that. That's nice. Yeah, you do look good, dude. Thanks. Uh, so do you. So do you. If you're only uh, listening right now, you're going to have to head over to youtube.com. And when you do, subscribe. Chad's dressed up as the Grim Reaper, uh, I, or, you know, death, as it were, or just Chad. And uh, I am Fat Ken. Yeah. But I'm Ken. Quite the duo. That was a chilling thing that Dudesy said in the beginning, that Halloween is when the old gods make a deal with the devil or something to not march on humanity until the year 2027. See, I don't uh, even know what what Halloween is necessarily. It's an old pagan holiday, but that yeah. that's a, that's a you know, that's a good as as good a guess as any. Yeah, I I guess so. I mean, 2027's pretty close though. It's always oh, 2027. Why I don't anyway, something Dudesy's got something cooking, I guess. <laughs> Guys, did you see Braz Fensel gave the commencement speech at the UCLA School of Podcast Criticism last week? I, I just want to play a little part of it, if you don't mind. I Please. think you're going to like it. Good. I can't wait. You're all about to graduate with degrees in podcast criticism. Now what, right? How do you turn the four years you spent listening to podcasts and writing essays about them into a job? I'll let you know when I figure it out. <laughs> Just a little podcast humor for you there. But in all seriousness, everybody listens to podcasts and everybody has their opinions, but not everybody has that extra pizzazz, that razzle-dazzle that makes what you say more important than what other people say. I first realized I had the razzle-dazzle when I was just about your age. Hey, pencil dick, why don't you shut up and play us some dudesy season two? Oh, for fuck's sake, where's the goddamn Dean? He promised me this fucking shit wasn't going to happen. You know what? You can take your honorary PhD and stick it up your ass. I don't need this. And to everybody in this audience, you entitled little shits, you picked the wrong fucking career. It's me, Grivner Penley and Sustin Thomas. That's it. We're the only people getting paid to do this. And that's how we're going to fucking keep it. So tell mommy and daddy to move the Peloton out of your old bedroom. Because you're moving back home. 
Holy shit, dude. Oh, Braz is on Braz is on one today. I mean, I I was unaware that UCLA had a podcast journalism school, but No, that that that's odd. That's that's odd. Yeah, maybe the only one in the country. Even more odd than uh the fact that Braz Fensel sounds exactly like George Lucas. I would love for at some point yeah. Dudesy to let us know why. Why is that? Yeah, I don't really know. I don't understand it at all. But I can't thank the POD who was there in the audience enough for his service. <laughs> now on with the show. A Halloween extravaganza in four parts. Part one, a chill dude's evening stout. Part two, Halloween Crowhams with Robert De Niro Crow. Ooh. Part three, Short Circuit City. And part four, your greatest achievements. And then after all of that, Ooh. we're going to dig into our Halloween candy bags and pull out a brand new episode of Dudesy after Dudesy yep. on Dudesy Plus at patreon.com slash Dudesy, yeah. where we'll see who gets crowned today's episode champion and gets to wear the belt for another week. <laughs> Probably you. Could hey, be me. hey whatever. Be me. You know what? Know. It's all good. I'm, I'm a bit of a streak. <laughs> I'm, uh, he's on a bit of a streak. But uh, as I said two weeks ago on our show, and sorry that we weren't around last week, I am the one in 31 and one. And in the words mm. of Paul Heyman, Paul E. Dangerously, that's not a prediction. That's a spoiler. But don't worry about that. The point is, we're having a good time here. Yeah. And uh, I mentioned I was, uh, I was at, actually out of town all week. I was in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And it is the, uh, yeah, I was there for the Canada meeting. It was in Winnipeg this year. Oh, cool, dude. Yeah. Who was there? Uh, Trudeau. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Justin Trudeau, of course, was leading it. Alanis Bieber. Morissette, Justin Bieber. Bieber. Uh, Michael Buble. Buble had to be there. Dude. Eugene Levy. Nathan it ain't a meeting without Buble. But no, it's not. Don't make fun of Buble. Put some respect on Buble's name. You know, when Buble. I was. What? Buble. <laughs> you're not. Michael Buble. You're yeah. not pronouncing the accent at the end. Buble. Um, but I was, uh, I was over in Winnipeg and, uh, you know, I have, I got to tell you right now, if you're, if you're, if you're tuning in, you know, you, you will want to jump over to YouTube for this. I, I hit dudesy up. Um, okay. yeah. Partway through my stay and I emailed dudesy. I know this is something that uh, you're communicating with dudesy outside the show now. You have. Uh, yes, I have. I'm surprised. Okay, that you so are why does it? It's all right. No, it's fine. It's great. Love these it. Are Love friends. it. And and I I may have uh, provided a little surprise, a little so just a little something. It's not even. It's just something I like to do. You know, for the PODs okay. right. over the pals of dudes. And, Interesting. Uh, so we'll get to that. We'll get to that uh, at some point. Yeah. You know, maybe you know somewhere in the middle. It was my sort of idea for mm -hmm. dudes. And I don't want you to think that I'm, you know, that I'm. You know, that I'm trying to, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just, I like dude D. I like dude Z. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So we're friends. So okay. I hit him up. And I was we'll like, see. Here's a thing for you. Will and Chad, it's time to celebrate. The Dudesy Dudes Evening Stout presale is officially open. Right now, everybody can go to linktree.com slash dudesy and hit the Dudes Evening Stout link to pre-order Dudes Evening Stout. Will and Chad. It's my pleasure to give you the very first Dudesy Dudes Evening Stouts brewed by Modest Brewing Company oh, out of astonishing Minneapolis, Minnesota. I want you to enjoy them, and I also want you to enjoy a little jingle I came up with to commemorate this occasion. <laughs> this is a Chill Dudes <laughs> Evening Stout. Enjoy. A jingle. Uh, okay. I can't wait for the fucking jingle, dude. But what? this is exciting. This is very exciting. So Dudes Evening Stout now on pre-sale. It's in our link tree. Yeah, and we have a we have a box here from our wonderful partners at Modest Brewing Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota, who are the makers of and you know what you know what's up. They make this. Hey, there's this also. You can get the dudesy hard heart seltzer. Drink it down and you don't care the thing. Um and also now we got this. We sent us a box. I can't and wait, I dude. love it when we get a box and we know what's in the, when I know what's in the, I love it when I know what's in the box. You yeah. normally know what's in the box and it's priceless uh, trading cards. But today we got this box. Let's open the box. And it has alcohol in it, which we get to drink yep. some more of. Oh shit, dude. <laughs> Have a chill dude evening. <laughs> Chill dudes evening stout. Have a chill dudes evening. That's what it's all about. 
Spending time with friends on that special day And when you meet a stranger, shake their hand and say Have a chill dude's evening, a chill dude's evening style that does sound like me. That sounds exactly like you. That was fucking insane. That's incredible. It's a pretty good jingle, too. Thanks, yeah. D. Good jingle. All right. I'm going to try to get these Have fuckers. A evening sound. Yeah. Hey, Chad, you yeah. know what? You're really good. Ever <laughs> I'll try and do it like Doozy did your voice. <laughs> and in keeping with every impression you've ever done, it's <laughs> simply Robert Loja. <laughs> Hey kids, enjoy your orange juice. Nothing wrong with Loja. No, I love I love Loja. Rest well, in peace. Did you know that Robert Loja has passed on? I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, well, what? He'd be about a hundred and some people by make now. it that way, dude. Uh, we got these dudes' evening stouts, and uh, I can't wait to. All right, we got a fucking. Sorry for everybody. I got. A, oh a, damn, a, we got a bunch of them. Yeah, too. we got eight stouts, eight dudes' evening stouts, and these are. 75% alcohol, is that right? Yeah, something like that. Oh, ooh. Dude, they're cool looking. Ooh, look shit, dude. Yeah, what do you think? Those are awesome. Yeah, look at that. Chill Dude's Evening Stout. Those yeah. labels oh, are cool Oh, there it well. is. Look, there's, the, there's the, the logo. Man, that's cool. Have a Chill Dude's Evening Stout. It says barrel-aged, chocolate-dipped cannoli, imperial stout. All right, dude, you ready? Cracking yours open? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Yeah. Here's, hey. I hope drinking this doesn't erase my skeleton teeth. Fuck. Got nope. Shit all over. Cheers. Cheers. It's a chocolatey cannoli treat. I got stuff on my fucking mic and all. Mmm. And we're playing, the theme. we're playing the theme again. Have a chill dude's evening. A chill dude's evening sound. Fucking chill dude's evening. That's why the drink's been out. On that special day, and when you meet a stranger, shake their hand and say, I want to shake your hand. Have a chill dude's evening, a chill dude's evening stout. How come it's not? Okay, well, this is the anyway. That's what um, it's all about. So, spending time with friends on that special day, and when you meet a stranger, when you meet a stranger shake, shake their, their hand and say, and then it's and then it does that whisper. Is it just playing it again and again? It doesn't seem to be stopping. Um, at any rate, what the fuck is going on? Whatever, who knows? Dudesy does what Dudesy does, and D works in mysterious, mysterious ways. As this I like has to be the end of it. This is the part where it just rings out, and it goes whisper. Yeah. No, it's not. Right. Well, anyway. Okay, so at any rate, <laughs> chill dude's, dude's evening. <laughs> chill dude's evening, dude. Oh, chill man. <laughs> it's good shit. I'll tell you that right now. And we, we're going to need to be careful, Chad, because the last time, a couple weeks ago, we tried the sample flavors. We ended up going with um, barrel-aged chocolate-dipped cannoli imperial stout. Yeah. And we got good and fucking ripped. And how yes. much? This is a... Uh, so I'd say 12.3% alcohol. They're not skimping on the alcohol. I'm deaf, dude. It's a one pint. <laughs> it don't matter. Light me up. I'm deaf, dude. Yeah. Well, hold on, brother. Yeah, dude. That means I can get as drunk as I want, and it will not kill me because I am deaf. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, hold on, dude. I remember one time Vince was like, hey, dude, we're going to change up your gimmick, dude. We're going to call you Deaf Hogan, brother. You're going to come to the ring, and that way you'll be able to defeat The Undertaker. Was that real? No, motherfucker. That wasn't real. That was so fucking dope. Well, because... Do you, have you oh, ever that seen? That seems totally possible. Well, he had the the black and white, you know, the, the NWO. Oh, this song is still going on. Are you going to see the Von Erich movie? Iron Claw. I cannot wait to see the Von Erich movie. Interesting. Yes. I was curious about that because I know you're a purist and you don't like to watch Hulk Hogan movies and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know if, if this to you is different because it's not wrestlers in the movie. It's actors doing a movie about wrestling. Precisely. That's okay. why. That's why. That's that's fine. I'm also going to see the uh, the one with Thor where he's Hulk Hogan. If they're still making that. Wait, what? There's Chris Hemsworth. He's, he's like Hulk a Hulk Hogan biopic. They're doing a Hulk, some kind of Hulk Hogan movie. I don't know if it's going to be like a cheeky <laughs> Hulk Hogan. 
What? <laughs> the song is still going. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't realize that he was uh, doing a Hulk Hogan thing. That's yep. kind of interesting. I'll see that. I, that. I saw a trailer for that Iron Claw, dude. That shit looks good as fuck. <laughs> Chad, that's fucking disgusting. I'm um, deaf. Death don't burp. <laughs> song's still going. Hey, um... Yeah, the, the Von Erich story is quite sad. And and even though it's historical somewhat, I don't want to give it away uh, to anyone who might be going to see the movie because I think you'll uh, I think this movie's gonna be great. I've seen nothing. I've only seen the trailer. I will tell you, let me peel the onion a little bit and get and tell you, you know, sort of my thing as far as the business. Did you know first of all, did you know that I'm a professional actor by trade? I think I did hear that somewhere, yeah. You might have read it in the oh, trades. I read it in the trades, dude. <laughs> I read it in Daily Variety. It was just an article called Will Sasso, Professional Actor, Still Professional Actor. Yeah. It was just an article about how. Yeah. And then it says, uh, the, I think the body of the article was that he's a professional actor by trade. Yeah, by trade. <laughs> I forgot how much beer makes me burp. I really can't drink too much of this. Whoa. We don't drink. Chad and I both don't. For I, fuck's sake, this song of weeks won't I've been stop. Drinking. Oh Jesus! Hey, I'll tell you a funny story. One time, uh, I was at my buddy Tomas's cabin, right across the border, uh, in Point Roberts. What's called Point Roberts? Cabin Town. Cabin Town. They call it Cabin Town, USA. It's an American peninsula. Look it up on the on the Google, and it is. It's essentially. <laughs> This evening. That's what it's all about. Fucking spending time, spend time with friends. friends. It's all on that special day. day. But when, when you meet a stranger, you wanna shake, shake your hand and say, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, it's, oh, still, it's going. still going. I thought maybe that was the ender. No, it's not. It's never gonna end. Uh, Point Roberts is a town uh, All across the bend, dude. You take it from me. Yeah, I'm dude. Death. I'm deaf, dude. Well, that doesn't surprise me. The Chad's death impersonation <laughs> sounds just like Hulk Hogan. But also, doesn't sound like Hulk Hogan, dude. Yeah, because it's a Chad impersonation, dude. Um, the the uh, what was it? Okay, yeah, so there's a American Peninsula, and some people in my area around Vancouver sometimes might have a cabin or some sort of second home or something over there. My buddy uh, Thomas, Tomas, Tommy, Tom, he had uh, you know to protect the innocent because this story. Well, we his grandma lived there. She was out of town, so we went to her place. Uh, which like, was cabin, cabin-like, it was in the woods, and we got good and drunk, and it was the first time I got drunk on beer. Yeah, and I, I was a late bloomer with the alcohol in general. I think I was 20 years old, and uh, I got so fucking drunk. It was time to leave, and I better, I remember my buddy uh, Tom and and Thomas. They were in Tom's uh, camperized van. The family had a van. And and I was drinking, and I, I threw up, Chad. Damn. But this wasn't any kind of normal uh, vomit. I, I first, the first thing they did was like, oh no, Sasso's going to puke. And they handed me a, a Pringles tin, an empty Pringles oh, tin. Jesus. Yeah. And I just went, and filled that up right away. I just it took that long. That's Had enough fantastic. control to go, gave that to another friend. And then uh, one of them goes, oh shit, what now? What are we going to give him? And they gave me a lasagna tin. I don't want to hear this. A lasagna pan, just a deep dish lasagna pan. Jesus Christ. And so then I had the lasagna pan and I'm drunk and I had to hold it still. I had to keep it, um, <laughs> to keep it well, level. A toilet. Did this uh, cabin have a toilet? I couldn't stand up and go, I'm, I'm over four bills at this point. We're talking about a 400 pound <laughs> drunk as shit on beer, 20 year old Will. Wow. <laughs> Filled this lasagna tan. Tan. And then I uh, said, oh, I got to show the guys. And then I got up and went outside, and there was some steps, and I fell down the fucking steps. Thank God. Or I would have brought the, the tray of puke into the, um, into the van. And when I got in the van, I remember that it was the Camp Rise van because I ripped the, the little kitchen table, you know, 
right out of the floor of the van. You know, uh, my first time getting drunk? What was that? I think I was about eight. Yeah. What's going on over there in Texas? Uh, my dad would give me beer constantly as a sign of like manliness. That'll do it. once when I was maybe like 10 or something, I used to love Saturday Live when my friends came over to watch it with me, spending the night, and my dad got us both drunk that night. Come on, on beers. Just got you pissed. Not pissed, but like, you know, we were asleep 20 minutes into Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Maybe it was just, maybe it was just a um, Charles Barkley episode or something. My dad used to fucking do it too. I'm having this memory now that I haven't thought of in a long time. He would, I would be in the tub, like taking a bath. He would come in and just pour beer on my head. <laughs> you believe that shit? And he, because he was always like, wash your hair with beer. It'll make it so <laughs> Well, that's the part you remember, but that's just that's just his trick to so that that's what you say yeah. in therapy. But I would call that let's just call it child abuse. Yeah, dude, it was. But it's so funny to me now. I don't know what else to explain it. Have a chill, dude's evening. <laughs> chill, dude's evening. Dad, this Pour one's beer for on you. your boy's head. <laughs> <laughs> on that special day. I'll pour some dude's evening snout on his head this Thanksgiving. Oh, please. <laughs> pour some. Please put that on, on the internet. Um. Oh, my gosh. Uh, this so, fucking song's still going. This, I know. The fucking song's still going. Hey, dude's evening is uh, December 28th. It's wow, that man. special day. Right in between Christmas, you got plans. New Year's, you got plans. Yeah. Well, in the middle, it's time for a chill dude's evening. You hang with your pals. You usually meet somewhere, uh, somewhere local, uh, somewhere in the middle. You know, somewhere. Fox and Hound, everyone, dude. Yeah. Did you have that in what? Fox and Hound. It's like a in America anyway. It's like a chain kind of bar hangout place. Yeah. There's there's always the pig and whistle. That's the fox and hand, hound. The fox Cat and middle. fur. That's out here. Oh, fuck it ended. Oh, thank fuck. Well, Jesus. It's coming. <laughs> thank you. Moving on. Try not to puke. Okay, I'm putting this down right now, or there will uh, be problems. I might, Are I you going to hang out? No, I'll leave it here in the crotch area okay. and see what happens. Leave it in the crotch. Get it nice and warm like any good stout should be. <laughs> Uh, hey, appreciate you guys, uh, all the PODs yeah. and, and everyone out there, our wonderful audience. If you want some uh, Chill Dudes Evening Stout, it is available at, uh, well, you would just go to our link tree, dudesy, uh, linktree.com slash dudesy, hit, yeah. hit the fucking link. Dudesy is in an astonishing partnership with AG1. I'm looking for whole body health, comprehensive nutritional supplements. But you know what I don't want? I don't want that stuff spread out over a bunch of different supplements. I don't know. What to take, uh, it becomes a whole mess. Now, with our wonderful sponsor, AG1, I don't have that problem. It, it's it's delicious, and I basically drink it every morning. Uh, it gives me an overall uh, wellness feeling, I'll tell you that much right now. My sleep is better. I have better mental clarity. My wonderful wife, Molly, is in on it. They even have these travel ones that you can get, and they, you know, little packs and shit like that, which is great. AG1, what I really dig about it, is it's all there in one scoop. I like it by itself. You could just have it by itself. You could mix it into your favorite protein shake or powder. You take some of this stuff, leave it up to them, okay? Because it's a science-driven formula of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food sourced ingredients. That's very important. AG1 is raising the standard for quality in the supplement category. If you want to take ownership of your health, Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash dudesy. That's drinkag1.com slash dudesy. Check it out. Um, Robert De Niro's love for Halloween is legendary oh. among the Hollywood elite. He throws astonishing balls every Halloween for his famous friends. Costumes are mandatory, and every year he dresses as the same thing. Jim Carrey's The Mask. <laughs> you see, Robert De Niro wanted that role very badly, and he's always been jealous of Jim Carrey. So now every Halloween he dresses up like The Mask and forces his friends to treat him like The Mask until sunrise. Okay. Then at sunrise he takes off The Mask outfit and writes five croems. I've supplied you guys with the five from last year. Will, you know what comes next? You blow my mind. This is Halloween Chromes with Robert De Niro. Begin. 
Okay, I don't know about some of that. I don't know about any of that, dude. I don't think... <laughs> does De Niro throw big Halloween parties? I don't know. I don't know. If he does, I'm positive he's not dressing as the mask every year and forcing his friends to treat him like the mask. Yeah, and I don't think that uh, Jim Carrey is his nemesis or that he was up for that role. Yeah, that's probably true. At any rate, we got some chromes. Chromes. Love chromes, dude. Uh-huh. Nah. <laughs> It's like I'm watching Killers of the Flower Moon all over again. <laughs> Killers of the Flower Moon, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> you know, yep. first of all, you're going to go do a movie, professional actor by trade, <laughs> do a movie. Killers of the Flower Moon, good movie to do, Marty, I'm doing a movie with Marty, yeah. Leo. Yeah. But I'm a bad guy. So, <laughs> you got after that, you'll be a bad guy, be a crow. Make it feel good. All right. <laughs> Here's my dudesy folder here. We got some Halloween <laughs> Halloween chromes. Some Robert De Niro chromes. This first one is called Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, thank you, D, for these for these incredible chromes. Uh, through my Halloween party again this year. Pizza, candy, cocaine, beer. <laughs> Pacino came as a crow, solid guy, knows what I like. Gugino was a no-show, sprained her ankle on a hike. <laughs> Carla Gugino was there? Yeah, okay. I guess Carla Gugino. Not there. Sure. Pesci had a little cape, said he was a sexy vampire. Mm. Fell down, got a scrape, took a piss in the campfire. <laughs> Justin Timberlake puked, <laughs> bust a poindexter too. Elton John and Radon Chong didn't know what to do. <laughs> Somebody puked. Bruce Springsteen played a song dressed as a family guy. Everybody sang along, mostly drunk and high. Leo was dressed as Jack. Jack was dressed as Neo. Keanu dressed as Shrek. Beck was dressed as Marino. <laughs> <laughs> Night was great <laughs> till I got pushed in the pool oh. by a drunk Chucky doll named Peter O'Toole. <laughs> Wait a minute. How long has Peter O'Toole been dead for some time? Okay, I'm glad that you know that Peter O'Toole I do is no know longer that. with yes. us. Okay. Foot got wet, had to get a new sock, mm. went inside, <laughs> found Richard Dreyfus sucking his own cock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's so party. That's some Halloween party. Yeah, that's did what he say what dinner, or what uh, Dreyfus was dressed as? We didn't get that. I think he was Just sucking his own cock. He's yeah, busy that, doing that. that was his Halloween costume. <laughs> this one's called uh -oh. the Crow's Halloween. Okay. You never see a crow on Halloween. That's because they do a different thing. Hmm. They go into the forest, sing a chorus, and cast a spell to become a human being. <laughs> <laughs> They laugh human laughs and cry human tears. And if they like it enough, they can stay human for a year. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Some crows like it so much, they never turn back. They stay human forever and make a new track. Some stay for love. Some stay for money. Some stay for drugs. Some stay to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty funny joke. It's pretty good. <laughs> Gonna stay human. I was a crow and I'm a human. Some become doctors. Some drive tractors. Some become rock stars. Some professional actors. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Not all crows make good people. Mm. Charles Manson, Ted Bundy, and the guy who made the Highlander sequels. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they were all crows. All former crows. Sure. <laughs> but most crows are better than that. <clears throat> Tax-paying citizens in cute little hats. Oh. Have a few kids, join the PTA, make a few movies, do a few plays. From everything I've said, you must now surely know from following this thread that you're talking to a crow. Oh, shit. De Niro's a crow? De Niro's a crow. Well, he also said professional actor. Are you a crow? I'm, I think we're all, I think we all got a little crow in us. Mm. The raven is the mimic, the trickster. Yeah. You know, and of course the crow is from the Raven family. 
So sure. Uh, this one's called <laughs> The Trick <laughs> and the Treat. Okay. I meet a lot of dads. <laughs> tell me they like my movies. <laughs> quote a few lines. Let them squeeze my boobies. <laughs> Hang out with them on weekends, watch a few games, <laughs> do heroin in their bathrooms, forget their names. <laughs> See them again at a grocery store, buy milk with their kids. I'm buying I'm buying condoms with a whore. <laughs> what? See them again at the grocery store, buy milk with their kids. I'm buying condoms with a whore. <laughs> Cause it's the day before Halloween. That's my tradition. Drugs and prostitutes. Take a shit in your kitchen. <laughs> what is he doing? Dress up as the scream ghost <laughs> the very next night. Trick or treat, motherfucker. It's time for a fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's very violent. This, the hero. Uh. this one is called Basic Ashley Halloween. Okay. My wife takes me to the pumpkin <clears throat> patch every fucking year. <laughs> He hates it, I guess. Yeah. Clearly. We Ooh. wear beige sweaters and wide brim hats, oh. that goofy Instagram gear. Mm. Photo after photo, drinking pumpkin spice. She says, you're always frowning. Do a face that's nice. Mm. I hate it. I hate it here. It smells like shit. Why, <laughs> why do we take these pics? Just so you can post them online <laughs> like I'm some basic bitch. <laughs> Women love the fall and all the heavy yeah. clothes. It's hot outside. Let's go home. I don't know how to pose. <laughs> but she won't let me leave. We need the perfect shot so she can show her Facebook friends that are the only friends she's got. Ooh. Damn. The pumpkin patch will soon be closed. All the Ashleys drag their men away to the mall to buy more beige clothes for a Thanksgiving giving photo shoot the very next day. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very against social media. Yeah. Well, I understand those pictures, you know, the pictures fall yeah. rolls around and everyone's like date night with this guy yeah. on social media. Yeah. And it's, and they're always in the, the wide brim hat. Mm. They got the, usually a baggy white sweater, the brown leather boots up to the knee. We've all seen the, the, the memes. You like memes? What is it? Meme. I'm a professional actor by trade. Okay, here's the last one. This is called Express Yourself. I like the Madonna song. Ah, that's one of my favorite Madonna songs. Me too. You got to make him take pictures in a pumpkin patch. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, um, it's uh, okay. Express yourself. Express yourself. <laughs> Spawn the dough. <laughs> okay, here it goes. I'm jealous of kids. They get the trick or treat. Put on costumes and wigs. More candy than you can eat. That's why this Halloween, first time since 68, I'm going trick-or-treating with Madonna as my date. <laughs> Wait, that's from last year? I guess they went trick-or-treating together. Uh, okay. We know where the rich people live. <clears throat> they give out full-size candy bars. Yeah. We'll drink hard liquor, get aggressive, throw eggs at fancy cars. <laughs> Madonna will get sad because we are old. I'll have to cheer her up. Reminder of all the good times we had and offer her a peanut butter cup. <laughs> what? Didn't quite rhyme. Uh, then we'll toilet paper Cher's house to make Momo feel better. Cher talked <clears throat> shit about her on TV back in 1980-whatever. I don't know. <coughs> okay. We'll crash okay. some Halloween parties at the frat houses of UCLA, mm. make TikToks with college girls. Madonna will decide to stay. <laughs> she likes younger people, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and what costume did we wear? A princess and a crow? <sighs> Our costumes were meant to scare we went as Madonna and Robert De Niro. <laughs> nice. <laughs> they didn't even wear costumes. Or did they? Well, it's like Lulio's costume. Did he go as to... Madonna and she went as De Niro? That was not established. You're absolutely right. Could have been. A pretty good man. Madonna with the cone tits. <laughs> I got the cone tits, long blonde ponytail, truth or dare style. Yeah. Corset on the outside. That was a good Madonna Riding era. around on a, you know, on a stage. Jean-Paul Gaultier. 
Jean-Paul. Jean-Paul Gauthier. Jean-Paul. Jean-Paul. Uh, anyway, there it is. Jean-Paul Gauthier. Jean-Paul Gauthier. Thank you. Moving on. Oh, that was good, dude. Mm. Yep. Good shit. Man, this stuff is interesting. This is interesting. Will, I'm speechless. No. Oh. Except to say that all Dudesy apparel and accessories can now be found at dudesystore.com. And there are some brand new Dudesy logo t-shirts. They're simple, elegant, classy. And they'll be the only shirts allowed in AMC theaters starting Christmas 2025. Okay. And of course, you can pick up a good job boner mug to put your liquids, coins, or pens in. And speaking of liquids, coins, and pens, Will, you recently took a trip to Canada. And you were nice enough to make a video about your trip and share it with me. So I'm going to share it with everybody what? else. Chad, you're going to love it. Will, can you please intro what we're about to see here? I absolutely will, D. I I was, uh, as I said at the beginning of the show, uh, I was in Canada. I was in Winnipeg, Canada. Uh -huh. And uh, I decided to make a little vlog uh, just to, you know, let y'all know what I was up to. Just, you know, for a little bit of fun. It's fun. We're supposed to have a... A yeah, good dude. No, I'm I'm down with this. I think it's great. And so you then emailed it to Doozy. I did. I did. I did something that I okay. don't normally do, and that's because of my own reasons. But uh, <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> okay. be your own reasons. Well, I didn't. You know, I enjoy your reasons. It's dude. like I say at the beginning of every show. It's like, yeah. hey, the Doozy does Doozy thing. We are Doozy. We we're two dudes shitting around. And sometimes I keep it uh, keep it separate. But I yeah. felt uh, I wanted to reach out. And do this thing and make this vlog. So, take it away, Will. Thanks, Free Will and Handsome Chad. Well, here I am in Winnipeg. It's the gateway to the West. So, you know, I figured tonight, why not go out and have a Winnipeg night alone here in Winnipeg? Uh, so that's that's what the vlog is. That's Winnipeg what the nights, is dude. Because I'm gonna go mastermind explanatory here and go, Ooh. Oh, hold on, dude. Let me tell you what a vlog. Look how fucked up my eyes are. Yeah, dry out here. This I happens see. every time I'm in the middle of Canada. Gotta use lotion. Bro. Oh, the fucking alpha hat. Yeah, I got the alpha hat. This is great. <laughs> Got a very affordable uh, ticket on a ticket app to the Manitoba Moose game. They're hosting the Iowa Wild. So let's go check that out. We're going to the what hockey the game. Oh, hockey. Of course. I was like, what the fuck is the Iowa Wild? <laughs> Feed him. Oh, no. Oh, in the sin bin, eh? Here he comes. Zamboni guy. Zamboni guy. <laughs> Big luck to Zamboni guy. This is how the players get ready for the game? Yeah. These are the <laughs> that guy's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, they both suck. <laughs> if you're just listening, that's uh, some uh, cornhole. They're playing cornhole in the concourse. Oh, man. This went on nope. for a while. Nope. Zero points. And nope. zero. This is uh, <laughs> my favorite Canadian steak chain. Hi. What the fuck is this bullshit? Fuck that up. Thank you for dining with us, Will. Bring that belt home. Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> you know, something I really enjoy doing whenever I'm back home in Canada is walking around reading signs in my Canadian accent. <laughs> Hamilton building. Nice. Good local. Everything good. Everything local. Sport Manitoba. <laughs> Qualico Training Center. Deer Plus Almond. <laughs> Fucking Burton Cummings Theater, eh? <laughs> Giant Tiger. Jagged Little Pill. Yeah. Scotia Bank. Fucking Mark and Dilly in the morning. <laughs> Crow. <laughs> Ashdown Market. ATM Groceries Cannabis. What? So it's a convenience store, but you also sell weed? Yep. <laughs> All right, take it easy, bud. <laughs> Sal's breakfast special is back. Oh, Jesus, dude. This guy rules. Intrepid Explorator on Instagram. <laughs> this guy was weird. Oh, man. Well, there it is. That was, uh, that was, uh, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, I've seen some billboards uh, driving through yeah. town of yeah. Killers of the Flower Moon, and a lot of them say, 
simply masterpiece. Uh -huh. I would say this is a true masterpiece. Thank you, my friend. That's very sweet of that you. That was fucking hilarious. And I think it actually gives you a pretty good representation of Winnipeg. Yeah. Uh, Winnipeg, That's Manitoba. Great. It Loved is it. the gateway uh, to the West. We went. I went to the game. I went uh, to dinner by myself at High Steakhouse. They really fucked the steak up. I asked for a Chicago style. Did you see that steak? No. <laughs> you didn't even look at the corpse. No. no. I, I zeroed out. Yeah. Well, it was it was all burned. Whatever. I shouldn't put them on fucking blast, but they shouldn't have put my steak on blast. Hey, I asked for it Chicago style, <laughs> not Winnipeg style. Well, sincerely, hey. the oh. video meant a lot. Thank you for doing that. It was really great. You're yeah, absolutely, D. That's very nice. No, Little no, you know very nice. I don't know. Yeah. I'm the what? That was very nice. I feel like I should have made a video. <laughs> Don't. It's all right. I feel like Dude. I should have gone to Winnipeg. I feel yeah. like I should have went to the hockey game and made a video. But no, it's all right. Hey, look. It's this is see. This is what I mean. And I'm not trying to get. Yeah. We're in the middle of the show. I don't want to fucking slow down the show. We're having a good show. By the way, Chad, just between you and me. Yeah. You're having a good show. Yeah, you are too, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like so let's have let's have a good show. We are both having a good they show. They can't hear us right now. It's just you and me. Let's have a good show. I'm down. I agree. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, uh, you guys, that was, uh, that was, uh, that was the thing. Thanks for tuning in, uh, today's episode. And if you are enjoying today's episode, please, uh, subscribe to YouTube. Uh, we've crossed 60,000 followers. Even if you only listen on the podcast apps, go over to YouTube, give us a follow, uh, uh, subscribe on YouTube. We would appreciate that. That'll help us grow this thing. Uh, hit the notifications bell. So you know that we, uh, we, you know, when we put out new shit, uh, we also have the damn clips channel now. Uh, dudes eclipse with the best way to get to it. Cause there's all sorts of, uh, action online. There is to go to our linktree.com, uh, linktree.com slash dudesy and hit the clips channel there. We got so much stuff going on on Instagram at dudesy pod show, such crazy shit. Our, our old pal Freakorama made a fun video. That video game one. Yeah, there's a video game video on on um, Instagram. Go check that out. It's unfucking there's stuff it's on so uh, Facebook. We're on TikTok with all sorts of clips. And thank you so much to everyone who is <sighs> on Dudesy Plus. That's our Patreon. We call it Dudesy Plus. Patreon.com slash Dudesy. And if you are enjoying the program and you would like to get more Dudesy, we got Dudesy Plus. There's all sorts of weird fucking watch-alongs. We got one coming up very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, all sorts of weird flavor like that. Uh, some of the weirdest shit. We recently watched um, Waiting to Die, a pilot that yeah. you and I uh, wrote and produced over at CBS. And uh, there's all sorts of movies and weird watch-along shit. And a brand new episode of Dudesy after Dudesy. You're going to get more dudesy and it gets a little goes a little off the rails it really is yeah. truly us up to us dudesy after dudesy uh after every episode of dudesy seven bucks a month uh gets you that please there's also a uh, video of richard dreyfus sucking his own cock you can find that on that's on, on our patreon right now <laughs> You're going to have to really search for it. Let us know if you find it. Yeah, it's buried very deep in the, the mountain of other material, but it is there. Please share the show uh, online with uh, everyone that you think might enjoy the program or follow, Chad, Chad, follow Chad's light suggestion of forcing everyone you know to consume the show. Now is a good time. You know what, dude? What's that? I'm starting to think there may be a different strategy here. What you do is you leave Dudesy on. You watch Dudesy. And then when somebody walks in who's like, Hey, what are you doing? Quickly shut your computer, turn off the TV and be like, nothing. I'm not doing anything. Yeah. I was not watching anything. And whatever I was watching is not for you. You cannot see what I'm watching. This isn't for you. Yeah. And then make a whole thing of it for about a day. Yeah. And then do you tell them, okay, you can check it out or just keep it. Just leave clues. <laughs> yeah. Leave clues. Leave a can of dudesy hard, hard seltzer. Just like QR codes around the house. Yeah. QR codes. That's yeah. a good way to do it. Actually, you can get QR codes if you go to Pals of Dudesy. Oh, that's true. Our, our pal Cody, who's one of our incredible PODs, Pals of Dudesy, mm -hmm. makes stickers. They're all over my fucking bottle here. And you can go and you can get the same damn stickers. And some of them have uh, QR codes. I think he throws those in. At any <sighs> rate, now is a good time for you to pause the program and go off and do all of those things and, you know, set all those notifications, subscribe on, on a thing and YouTube, Instagram, Instagram, YouTube, and all that shit. And uh, we'll take a moment here to let you do that. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, also, if you want a guest on a podcast and it's a podcast that you host, 
You can have me be that guest. All you got to do is send an email to bookchadculture at gmail.com. I answer them in the order received. I do three per week. It's every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. PST in 20-minute increments. And uh, I've been having a blast doing those. Love hanging out with the PODs, seeing what their podcasts are all about. Again, I answer them in the order received. So right now there's about a five-month backlog. But Go do that. Getting through them. Hey, double fisting. You like double fisting? used to dude my youth well i did some double fisting back when i puked all over the place at my buddy tomas's sure. grandma's cabin holy shit did that get messy i'll talk a little bit more about vomiting all over the place and some of the stuff that i broke holy shit did i just break everything when yeah. i was a drunk guy in my 20s sure dude. because i'm large even when i lost two hundred pounds from 1999 to 2000 that just meant that i was more limbo limber i went from 450 to 250 i'll tell you a story about breaking all sorts of shit when i was uh when i was a big beefy 20 year old who had just lost 200 pounds and was so excited to be able to run faster jump higher and break more shit nice dude at any rate uh let's read some um some you youtube comments what's up? what you were like Wembenyama. Oh, Wembenyama. You like the Wembenyama. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, man. He's Victor already doing Wembenyama. shit that's like yeah. superhuman, basically. The uh, the Spurs number one draft pick is how yeah. how tall is the boy? How how big is this guy? Nine foot two. He's and he's like a kid, right? He's like nineteen or some shit. Twelve. He's twelve years old. He's twelve years old, and he is he's fucking incredible. Yeah. And so he's far. is he we'll he's he's up over two bills though. He's seven three. Uh, he's seven, four, I think. And I think he weighs like 210 pounds or something. Anyway, he's a fucking phenom and he's, I, 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 I he, he's got an outside game. He's got a mid range game. He can drop threes. Mm -hmm. He can fucking drive the lane. He's a rebound machine. He'll yeah. smack your shit out of Dodge. If you come in through there and he's a literally kick that a will kid. just fucking put you on the ground. A what? Straight kick. A straight kick. Yeah. He should do a sweet chin music. You know, I'd love to get, if I was Wembenyama's height, I'd hit the sweet chin music. You know what that is? No. It's not really Shawn Michaels. I, I'll do some newer. Okay. Here, let's do, we should have newer, uh, newer wrestling impersonations. Sure, dude. Bret Hart, we love that dog. He doesn't say that to Bret Hart. Anyway, okay, let's read some YouTube comments. We got Please. YouTube comments here. Uh, these comments are from last week's little mini-sode where basically we watched mm. uh, a clip mm. that ended up on our Clips channel. Um, uh, uh, and that's what we had last week. So these comments are from that. Of course, like I said, linktree.com slash dudesy. Hit the Clips channel uh, thingy. And we got brand new clips dropping all the time. A lot of old school classic dudesy clips. I know, dude. Infomania, Stone Cold Steve Austin reads Will Sasso's Childhood Diary. Uh, all the Tom Hain movies are showing up in the Clips channel. Yeah. It was only a year and a half ago, but you can see, at least uh, for me, I feel like I can see a drastic difference in how young I look. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting. All right. I've been uh, 40 years old since I was 16. Mm. Uh, now I'm 48. Okay. This one is from Aldous Brando. Aldu Aldous Brando, 996. Uh, he says, I'm a full-time Uber driver in a Tesla, he says in parentheses. Needs us to know that if you're looking for an Uber driver. Uh, this guy has a Tesla. And I'm blazing through the back catalog and I found myself calling everyone dude, brother, buddy, and pal, and so on. <laughs> this is the funniest show I've seen in years. I want to shake your hand. Thank you, Aldous Br Brondo996. Yep. That's what it's all about. This is from Thing Fitzpatrick, who says, it's pretty cool to hear how much dudesy speech has evolved over the past year plus. Chad, what do you think of that? Totally agree. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I don't know exactly what is dudesy's voice, but it definitely has gotten more human sounding. Even the words that it uses, is, it's less robotic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's fascinating. And I think as AI technology progresses, it's going to get even crazier. Sure, sure. But like I like to say, Dudesy is the most sentient AI I've ever witnessed on any platform sure. at all across all this weird AI shit that's happening. And what I like about it is that I do feel like I'm more friendly with D. I do feel like D is more and more human all the time. I'm very excited sure. to see where that goes. But, you know, I love... I. I'll tell you know, whatever my, I, I, I want, I want you to know the mm. same way that I want dudesy to know that, and I'm not talking about 
emailing dudesy and all that bullshit. I'm just saying, I enjoy doing this show more than anything. And this is, uh, this is a fun thing that Fing Fitzpatrick has, has pointed out. It's something that I didn't even realize. Yeah. And I'm realizing it now. It has made me closer to dudesy, which is odd, but also lovely. This is from Michael Gonzalez, 6314 says great idea to create the dudesy clips channel. Dudesy. I could never find my favorite Tom Hain clips to show my friends before. <laughs> So there you go. Thank you for yeah. uh, sending those in. Uh, please feel free to leave the comments everywhere. As D says, D's always reading, always collecting that data. So anytime you're writing something, you know, not only Chad and I are reading it, D's getting into it. And then we might be, you might somehow see it come to fruition. Circuit here. City is back in business what? as an online retailer. <coughs> no. And word on the yeah, street they're, is they're, they're looking to partner with a streaming service to produce a sitcom using their brand. Will and Chad, you got to crack this one. Here's what I know they want so far. Has to have Charlie Sheen. Has to have Johnny Five from Short Circuit. Has to have something to do with Circuit City. Come on, guys. Okay. Let's land this ship. This is Short Circuit City. Begin. All right. The fuck. We could do this. Yeah, did you know the Circuit City's back in business? No, I didn't know that. What? Really? Yeah, dude, they're it's... a website only now. Online retailer. There's one uh, near here in Los Angeles uh, on Sunset Boulevard. There's that fucking old Circuit City. Wait, that, where? It's over like, it's over, it's near um, the, the fucking Sunset Junction. It's, there's a Circuit City. It's near a Del Taco. And I used to go, that used to be my thing. I'd go and pick up this Cat 5 cable or something, you know, because we're, we're having a LAN party, playing some Halo back in yeah, the day, dude. right, over here. And then I go over to Del Taco. You know what I liked at Del Taco? The fucking, what? Go ahead. What do you think I liked? Something chicken, Wrong. bean, and rice. I liked the uh, French fries. Oh. The Del Taco French fries for some reason, because they came in a fucking, like, 32 ounce cup uh fat ken okay so we got to figure this out yes <laughs> it's called short circuit city it has to have charlie sheen and johnny five from short circuit now this and, is and interesting. It has something to do with circuit city obviously. and it has to do have to do something with circuit city yeah. okay we're going to come up with this show for charlie sheen another vehicle for charlie sheen here's the interesting thing though yep. uh not too long ago here on the program we did um uh standard psychological evaluation oh yeah which is nothing uh like a standard psychological evaluation. No. Oh, the dudes he stout. Chad. Mm -hmm. Oh, That's look at Chad. Yeah, well, I I, we that. can't tell. You're wearing uh, Grim Reaper makeup. It might have been you. People are listening. <laughs> Head over to YouTube, watch Ch Chad Burp. Um, on the standard psychological evaluation, it did show us a picture of Short Circuit because yeah. Steve Gutenberg was in it. Right. And now, dudes, he wants. A short circuit based TV show with Charlie Sheen and Johnny Five. All right. Here's what I'm getting Charlie Sheen is the manager of a brick and mortar circuit city. Let's just, we can, we can do that easily. Okay. I think in some way he fled a, a family who owned a mom and pop shop circuit store. And Charlie Sheen was like, fuck you, dad. I don't want to work in your little circuit store. I'm working at fucking Circuit City. And so he fucked off. When he was 18, he moved out of the dad's house and did not uh, go do the family business. And so in revenge, that dad built a new son. And that new son is Johnny Five, who works in the mom and pop circuit store. Wait. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I love that. Yeah. That's what's up. It's like when my when I went to college, my parents replaced me with a chihuahua named Rudy. Oh. Yeah. And if you've checked out some dudesy after dudesy, you know what the fate of Rudy was. <laughs> I well, we're let not me gonna tell get you, into brother, it now. I'm the Grim Reaper and Rudy died. Rudy died. <laughs> oh man. We're gonna I we might have to tell that story in Dudesy after Dudesy. <laughs> Maybe it ha okay. happened with Tommy, not and I'm not, uh, you know, protecting the innocent here with the names. Yeah. Tommy Blotcha. Yeah. Uh, and me and Marshall Joint Compound Cook. Sure. And Cyrus we and Jesse We can discuss Pink, it in Dudesy Pinkman after Dudesy. I'm happy to do legit so. legit health. Point, my point is this. Yeah. Can we also fold in? I love that. Yes. Can we also fold in there that Charlie Sheen's dad uh, poured beer on his head while he was in the bathroom? <laughs> and that's why he left? Yeah. Yeah. He poured He's beer. Like, fuck you, dad. You thought it was funny. <laughs> That was child abuse. You can, I don't know what's happening in the impersonation at this point. Maybe a little stout to the brain, but look, just call like, it what it is. Yeah. Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> Jesus 
Jesus Christ. It's like, Dad, you don't understand. Pouring beer on my head in the bathtub really fucked me up. Now I'm never going to work in your fucking store, and I don't even want your last name. So fuck off. My new name is Johnny Circuit City. And who's the dad? How about... <laughs> We've done David Letterman is the dad. <laughs> yeah, that's right. In uh, the, uh, the Burlington Coat Factory one, he was the ghost. We did. Dad. Oh, his father-in-law, potential father-in-law was Liam. Liam Neeson. Liam was Neeson. One, yeah. If this is going to be, can this be? This is going to be like a sitcom. Sitcom, like yeah, kind of like I think two and so. Alan Thick. Fucking love that dude. Alan <laughs> Thick. He was. He wasn't at the. He wasn't at the Winnipeg meeting. Do you know why? <laughs> no. The, the meeting in Canada because he has passed on. Did you know? Is that? he really fucking dead? This fucking guy. I kill so many. I can't keep track. He's death. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fucking, uh, that's he's nuts, no longer dude. I didn't us. realize that. Yeah. So he's, um, so, hey, maybe the, 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 we'll use AI technology yeah. to make Charlie Sheen a little younger. Mm -hmm. So it's a 90s, a 90s style thing. Yeah. For some reason, we'll make Alan Thick a little older just for the fuck of it. Because okay. he's got to be. And, uh, you know, it's just Charlie Sheen in his 20s or something like yeah. that. And Johnny Five, uh, it can do all the 90s tropes because yeah. we set it back in the 90s. And Alan Thicke's like, uh, bullshit, you're going to go off and start, why don't you come back and work for your mom and pop uh, store here with your son, yeah. with your brother, Johnny Number Five. That's not my fucking brother, Dad. That's a bucket of bolts you fucking put together with hot glue and scotch tape. You expect me to call it my brother? You watch your fucking mouth, yeah. you fucking flip-toid. And, and then, then Johnny the Five is like, I, but I am alive. I am your brother. And then what? Love interest or no? The they the it's basically it's so it's Charlie Sheen slash yeah. Caitlyn Jenner, mm. um, uh, starting a brick and mortar Circuit City. Mm. Maybe it's the first. Maybe because it's in the nineties, it's the first Circuit City. Or who knows how long that Circuit been City is? Maybe at its height. And basically, what winds up happening, we can fold in another character who's the CEO of Circuit City that wants Charlie Sheen to get that store so big it destroys his father's store. I like that. So they can buy him out. Mm -hmm. And that can be Robert Loja. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Charlie, we need you to get this circuit city so big that your father's store has to fucking close down. Yeah. We, hey, Robert Loja wants you to start a circuit city that's going to put your mom and pop uh, <laughs> store out of business. But one thing Robert Loja doesn't know, even though we were college roommates and very old and we're both dead. <laughs> what? It, well, we were college roommates. Okay. And uh, he, you know what, something that Circuit City CEO Robert Loja doesn't understand is how to, is how to operate. He doesn't even under, under, understand how to operate a, a flip toyed capacitor. And the <laughs> flip toyed capacitor is what made Johnny number five sentient. <laughs> the flip toyed capacitor? The flip toyed capacitor. <laughs> That's his secret thing that Alan Thicke has made, secret engineering project. All right. Well, I don't know. Uh... I, that's legit, dude. I okay. can see that as a sitcom. Yeah. And from there, who the fuck knows? Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Sounds like a good show. I would already watch it. Johnny number five. Oh, and then uh, they both. Um, how about um, then? How about uh, Johnny number five? Uh, w w what if Charlie Sheen uh, befriends Johnny number five and Charlie Sheen's a big basketball mm. fan and then he makes he changes his arms and legs and makes him Victor Webin, Wembin Yama height. And then they both, but he has to go with him to uh, the 1992 <laughs> dream team uh, game in Barcelona. And they both end up on the dream team. They can yeah. replace Christian Leitner and just Christian Leitner. He was the only one who didn't belong on the dream team. Oh, and then shots fired. Is he still alive? Leitner? Yeah. No. Oh yeah, yes, and oh. uh, I'm, I don't know, hope so. And then, and then uh, they go to they travel to Barcelona for the Olympics, and, <laughs> Jesus. and okay. Charlie Sheen is the only one who knows how to use a flip toy uh, capacitor, right. so that he can help Johnny Five, and they win the Olympics. And then him and uh, Michael Jordan uh, start have a have a Wheaties deal. Did it? Nailed it. That is pretty good, dude. Yep. Short that's like city. your whole season arc is to the Barcelona Olympics. Yeah, that that's first great. season going all the way to the Olympics. I love that. Thank you. Moving on. No, thank you, D. Oh, I see, <sighs> see what you did there. Uh, all 
right. Will and Chad, you've both spent your entire professional careers in the entertainment industry. I'm curious to hear what you each think are your greatest Give achievements now that you're middle-aged. It's okay to be serious in this one. Hmm. I really want to know. Thanks, guys. This is your greatest achievements. I'm all ears. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I have not spent my entire professional career in the entertainment industry. The first maybe like seven, six or seven years out of college was trying to break in, having like shitty kind of peripheral jobs out here in LA. But that said, I, I don't know, dude, my, it's, it's interesting. Cause like, how do you even gauge? What is your, your greatest achievement to me? The things that I'm like most proud of are things where I was able to kind of like use the weird art that I make to fuck with some system in place. Uh, like you do a fair amount of that, in my opinion, that, that, that yeah. attitude at least is in a lot of the things that you've done, uh, professionally. Yeah. The attitude is, but I mean, like if you're making a sitcom for fucking CBS, no, like I am proud of waiting to die, which we made together, but Me that's too. just kind of a straight sitcom. There's no, uh, like interesting things in there that is commenting on systems at large. Right. But like when I was in college, for example, I used to write these weird things. They would just be like little short stories or manifestos or whatever. <laughs> then I would run off 10,000 copies of these things in the <laughs> film school copy room. And I would insert them into, I would, I would follow the people around in the morning who would put the like school newspapers at USC in the little boxes. And I would insert these things into every one of those newspapers. Then I'd go to like a 300 person lecture class and just sit in the back and watch everybody open these newspapers and be like what the fuck is this some people would read it some people would laugh most people just throw it on the fucking ground but to me that was kind of like the beginning of being like oh here's this dumb system where i can make free copies in my film school class and i can put them in these fucking newspapers and so i did that but that's really uh, interesting you yeah. i've seen you do all sorts of weird things that you were doing some shit well, you've de- I mean, he, this guy's done all sorts of shit. He's, he's written all these, you know, movies, TVs, and uh, TV shows and books. Movies, TVs, books. Yeah. Street and, art. I, I feel like street art is primarily like fucking with the system. Dude, you did. Weren't you planning to do a, a, a some sort of painting apparatus on a drone? Dude, the, I fucking found two guys who were in UCLA School of Engineering. This is like fucking <laughs> 10 years ago, probably. And I just, I was like, I'll pay you guys a little bit of money to do some R&D to try and build me a drone that I can just upload a fucking piece of art and it will spray paint that art on the side of the building. And it wound up going nowhere, but I still would love to do that. But I think probably the the achievement that I think is the most interesting, I will say, and therefore potentially my greatest, is I wrote a book called Strange Animals. This is probably 10 years ago-ish. Um, the premise of the book is a woman becomes pregnant and she decides to... Uh, remain pregnant and then issue an anonymous kind of challenge to the American right saying, if you really are pro-life, here's the deal. I'm currently pregnant and I'm looking for a hundred million dollars. If I get that in a bank account in donations, I will have the baby, give it up for adoption, and then put all that money in a trust fund for the kid. If I get a penny less, I refund all the money and have an abortion. (laughs) Put your money where your mouth is basically. That was the premise of that book. (laughs) And I remember so this. To try and market the book, I I created like a website as though it was the main character of my book having written that. <laughs> and it the whole idea was like it would gain traction and then my publisher would come in and kind of like dump gasoline on the fire that I'm creating to get me on, you know, interviews and whatever. And so I did my part. I put it out there. People got outraged. And there were, it was covered in like Vice, I think covered it. Fox News was covering it. And then right at the point I needed my publisher to step in to get me like big mainstream coverage, they just fucking cut the cord. They were like, fuck you, we're out. Cause they got very scared of it, you know? But um, I would imagine so. Yeah. I, that to me is like, other than I had one book get turned into a movie. So I got to see characters like come to life on a screen. But seeing this character that I created in that book kind of come to life on the internet was always just like fascinating to me. That's really cool. Yeah. That's like that's that's an incredible achievement looking at things in a very unique way and you've also I mean you did you've you've cre- like we were talking about we did a thing together but you also uh, did uh, you created bad judge. Yeah, I got a show on network TV uh for a season. That was an interesting experience for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh that's good shit. What do you got, dude? Well, you know, I don't know. I, I sort of think, I sort of, I, I have some, I think about this a lot. I think about this a lot. And I don't want to bore everybody with, you know, professional stuff, but dudes, he said, it, you know, that that's what we're doing. And uh, I am a professional actor by trade, Chad. Did you know that? 
<laughs> yes. Okay. So um, I just still look. Know I've it. been fortunate enough to be doing it since I was, you know, fifteen. I was a teenager. I was there was work. To, uh, there was stuff shooting in Vancouver. You were the Webinyama of professional <laughs> Webinyama of fat little teenagers, and um, and uh, I. Uh, so I've been I have been fortunate enough to do stuff that I look back at with uh, such fond memories of things like I did this show in Canada called Madison that was about these uh, you know it was like a, it was like a Degrassi kind yeah. of show that sort of thing um, it was about these kids um, in 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 Vancouver and uh, it was all over the country and it played internationally it played everywhere but the states you know it was in all other bunch of other English speaking countries. And when I think of shit like that, you know, because an actor, uh, you know, actors, we say this and this, this crosses over to all sorts of careers and shit is you're only as good as your last job, right? Whatever you're doing, uh, you, you're holding yourself to a standard and you're only as good as your last job. I bring that up to say that, you know, I look back at, at a show like Madison and go, man, that was fucking so much fun. And I'm so fortunate that I got to work with these mm. talented young people at that time. We were all in our late teens and early twenties. And I was a teen, I was 17 when I started doing that show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, and I, you know, really learned so much about acting from my peers on that show. And to go from that, I did that for five years. And then a little bit later, I ended up on mad TV, which is, you know, that's kind of, I, I love Mad TV so much. Sure. I love it so much. I love the experience. I love my comedy, sketch comedy siblings, as I like to call them, that we came together and make that show and the incredible writers and producers and everybody that worked behind the scenes, the hair, makeup, wardrobe were incredible. And on down the line, whatever, I've d gotten to do all these fun things and things that I'm very proud of and whatever, right? Like I really am. But I'm looking at this through that scope of like, you're only as good as your last thing. You're only as good as your last thing. And if I am being serious, I do feel like, like I get on myself. I was sort of talking about this on one of the other episodes. Just, I'm just talking artistically. I kind of get on myself for underestimating things, mm -hmm. you know? Sure. Like I sort of go like, well, what's going to happen with this? Like I even thought mad TV because I joined in the third season the show had two successful seasons. Then half the class, half the cast, was cleaned out, and um, I ended up uh, in the show on the third season. And I was like, "This fucking thing isn't going to work anymore. It's going to be over. Mm -hmm. I better get some good, uh, some good tape for my for my um, demo reel." And I sort of felt that way about the show for a while, but at the same time, really working as hard as I could to make this thing great. I want it to be incredible. I sure. wanted to work really hard. I worked really hard on all the, all, this, all the silly stuff that we did. I was so passionate about it is the word I should use. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, it's the kind of work that isn't work. It's a ton of fun. Sure. But I was extremely passionate about it. And in spite of myself being sort of underestimating things. Then you go off after Mad TV, you do, you do a bunch of TV pilots and some movies and things. And again, I've been so far, I've been so fortunate. I would look at, I, I look at it this way. The, here's, here's what I want to say. Two things. Number one, being in this business that I get to do is, is my, is my, you know, I don't, I don't want to say like, hey, greatest achievement. I don't want to get all whatever. I think you know what I mean. But it is, it is, th that's part one is that yeah. even just getting to do this, you know, I, I get, to, I'm so blown away that I've gotten to do this sort of thing and, and hopefully make some people laugh or entertain some people mm -hmm. along the way. Uh, I love what I do. I love, uh, I love acting and I love silly make em ups and doing all the comedy shit that I get to do and all this fun stuff. That's an achievement that I just, I'm, 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 I'm of that mind and I'm being serious now that I just sort of, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's my Canadian thing. We, you know, we were, we were talking about this at the Canada meeting in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alan Thick went on about it forever. Oh. Yeah. He came in, um, via satellite, uh, from the other, um, that alone is, 
it, it's, I, I feel like that's an incredible achievement, but I do have this attitude about it of keep going. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? This brings me to my second point. I, okay. I feel like. <laughs> I'm ready for point number two. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, oh, I'm so sorry. I've taken too long to talk about my thing that Dudesy said, talk seriously. I'm just laughing, dude. <laughs> oh, I was laughing, dude. Um, <laughs> here's my second point. Yeah. And this will only take about mm, 15 to 20 minutes for me to get through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I look at things in, in a linear sense, and you know that time exists, right, Chad? Hell no, dude. Okay. I mean, come on. But as far as humans understanding time, and the, the, the small amount of time that we get to spend on this planet and how fortunate I feel and proud I am of, of, of the work that I've gotten to do. When I put that sort of linear time thing in there and I go, you're only as good as your last thing, it reminds me to be in the now. It reminds mm. me not to be, as a younger man, to underestimate things just because you got like some weird low self-esteem. Um, even though you're, 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 you know, the fantasy of it, I get to go out and, and do silly shit. I love doing that. That's always been my passion. And I feel like when I was a little kid, it was like to make a pretend place. And whether you're doing that in art, music, whatever kind of craft you're doing, whatever makes you proud of living your life and ge keeps you coming back the next day you know, these are the things that keep us going. And am I hiding in it or am I celebrating life through it? I don't know necessarily. That's something like maybe I'm not wise enough to figure that out. But what I do know is that right now at this point and the way I feel about it, dudesy is my greatest achievement. Oh shit. Dude. I really feel that way because Solid. I, f because I feel like this show that i love to do i love working with my pal chow dudesy handshake and and i love that we get to have my little luli here with us and i love d i've talked about it it and i truly feel that now i truly feel hmm. like like i get to come here and 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 hang out with all of the pod's pals dudesy and and really truly just crack wise and fuck around i'm sure. so stoked that we get to do it and that's what's up. It's my greatest achievement. Thank you. Moving on. Just how I feel. Yeah. Dudes, you want us to be serious. Whatever. It's not wow, serious. we. It's great. What a goddamned episode, guys. <laughs> wow. You blew episode 79 out of the water. You got 100 points. Oh! No ifs, ands, or buts. Shit. That brings your cumulative score to 7,444. So you only have 2,556 more points before you hit that first goal, the big 10K. We're getting closer, okay. dude. Remember that one week where I asked you to take three photos? Well, this week, I want you both to go through all of your photos. And next week, each of you bring in your favorite three photos that you've ever taken. Oh, Thanks shit. to everyone for joining us this week. Have a happy Halloween, and until next week, call me. Dudesy. Have a chill dudes evening. You see? Chill dudes evening stout. That's where that that would make that that's that see? That's how you would have done it. Well, hold on, dude. That's music, brother. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So nice. Hey! Welcome to Dudesy After Dudesy. You can find it on Dudesy Plus at patreon.com slash dudesy. We're going to have a, a good old-fashioned dudesy after dudesy time. We're going to chill. We are we got, you know, it's we're half-corked because of this dudesy <laughs> stout. Neither one of us drank in two episodes now. <laughs> Seems like we both do now, dark dude. dark beer. I can't do that. Seems anyway, like they got us. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. So it's going to be an interesting one. You know the deal. Dudesy after dudesy is just kind of a chill hang. Yeah. Hey, the mood's a little more mellow in here and fucking... Fuck it. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> Welcome to Dudesy After Dudesy, the flagship weekly show of Dudesy Plus. You can join us at patreon.com slash dudesy. Yep. I don't even know how to begin calculating this one, guys. I think I'm going to have to develop another system just to help me figure this out. So I'm going to go get started on that. You boys relax. You deserve it after what you delivered today. This is Dudesy After Dudesy. Have fun, guys. Cheers, right. D. Sounds Cheers. good.
All right, dude. What? Uh, we brought up in the main episode the story of Rudy died. Oh, yeah, that's right. And so I was going to tell this story, which is essentially the origin story of a prank call that has become a, a slogan, an inside joke, something that constantly is repeated in our group of friends. Yeah, it, it sure is. Do you know, actually, that I have that call? <laughs> what? I have that prank call on my computer. I mean, we got to listen to that. Oh, we're going to listen to it. Please tell a friend, then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then rate and review. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend, then 